Kwame is the first high school player to be the NBA's number one draft pick. His adjustment to the NBA has been quite a challenge, but Kwame has faced challenges his entire life, as he described in his high school journal. If I could live my life over again, I would try to listen to my mother more than I do now. My mother has done the best possible job she could at raising my brothers and I with limited income. I would get a job to help her pay the bills so she wouldn't have to worry as much as she does. I would tell her I love her more often and try my best to understand on Christmas why I didn't get any gifts and on my birthday why there was no party or cake. Those were Kwame Brown's thoughts in high school. And as a youngster in Brunswick, Georgia, the seventh of eight children, there would be other hardships as well. When I was growing up, you know, it seemed like sometimes we were going to get evicted or, you know, the lights that were going to get turned off. But there was one person who held the family together. I was a mother and a father, so I say that it was a, a tough situation to be in, but I was so used to doing it until it didn't bother me. Kwame's mother worked at a local hotel, laboring long hours to pay the bills and support the family. But eventually, the heavy burden would take a physical toll. One morning I couldn't get up. I was paralyzed, totally. Leg, eyes couldn't move. Joyce Brown was forced to go on disability, and the hard times at home began to affect Kwame. I was here and the wrong path, and uh, I got real heavy into just hanging out with my friends, and uh, my grades got really low. Then, into his life stepped a pastor, the Reverend John Williams, who began to steer him back on course. He challenged me, he was like, you know, you, I know you can do better. In middle school, you were making A's and B's, in high school, you are making C's and D's, what are you doing? He began to make the honor roll. I mean, I remember him calling me 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning asking for help in chemistry, you know, tough courses. And so he began to really put effort and time into that kind of thing because it was a part of him now. But another role model also became a source of inspiration for Kwame. Michael Jordan. That's all was in his room, all over the wall. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. He said he used to have dreams about Michael Jordan, him beating Michael Jordan one day. I like the way he didn't take no for answer. Everyone knew he was going to take those last shots, and he still, you know, had the guts to first take them, but then be successful at them. But the chances of Brown following in Michael Jordan's footsteps seemed remote. He wasn't even a top high school player, much less a potential college recruit. Then he began applying the same discipline to basketball as he had to school, and a mediocre player began to blossom into a star. He really took it more seriously going into our junior year. He started being responsible. You know, he started lifting weights, and you started seeing him in here doing a little more shooting on his own. Kwame soon captured national attention, and by his senior year, he was not only one of the country's top college prospects, he was also one of the country's top players. As he contemplated whether to turn pro, the choice seemed clear. The first thing I thought about, you know, was what this means for my family and my family situation. So I want to lift him up. Just lift him up. And in true storybook fashion, one of the teams considering drafting him was the Washington Wizards, Michael Jordan's team. Well, they brought me in the first time. I was a little nervous, you know, Michael being out there and everybody. I was just, I was just nervous. So I, I kind of, I did okay, but I didn't do the best I could. But over the years, Brown had learned perseverance. And now that his dream was in sight, he wasn't about to let it slip away. When I came back the second time, I just came in to play. I wasn't worried about Michael, I wasn't worried about Doug. It was like I was out there by myself. Then it was up to them. If they made the wrong decision, then they'll pay for it. With the first pick in the 2001 NBA draft, the Washington Wizards select Kwame Brown from Lynn Academy, Brunswick, Georgia. I don't know uh, how to put it. I mean, I don't know how to put it in words. You know, my mom came up and hugged me. She came up and hugged me, and I just knew how proud she was of me. Kwame Brown from Lynn Academy, Brunswick, Georgia. But here it is for Kwame Brown. For the first time in NBA draft history, high school kid is number one in the draft. I'm not responsible for what other people think. Uh, I think I made the right decision, and I'm just going to bless my family and uh, 
it's amazing how God works, so I'm just going to keep living. Your son is so likable, but also unassuming. What concerns do you have about going from Brunswick, Georgia, to Washington, D.C., and the NBA? Well, I'm a person that used to live up north anyway, so it don't bother me, so I love it. I have friends in Washington. What possessed you to keep him and go for Kwame Brown? Well, obviously, uh, you can see he's a, he's a well-educated kid. I think he's done a lot uh, in terms of his basketball capabilities. I think it's up to Doug as well as the Washington Wizards to help this kid develop, and he certainly has the skills. Now, I mean, we entertain a lot of possibilities, but none could change our minds in terms of what this kid could uh, do in the long range for, for the Washington Wizards. Have you had any dreams yet about playing alongside him? Oh, yeah, but uh, my, my bigger dream is to beat him one day. <laughs> <laughs> that is a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and as Kwame begins his NBA education, he couldn't have a better mentor. Kwame walks in. Uh, he knows Michael's waiting for him, rookie. The other day, they were in a shooting contest. First of all, you don't want to get in a shooting contest with Michael to start out with. And Michael uh, just just torched him and then said, he said, call me daddy, call me daddy. And he made that rookie call him daddy because he lost the shooting game. What you noticed about the way that he practices and works out that's different from other guys that you've practiced and worked out with? Well, it's better than everybody else. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody really or are you just saying that? No, nobody's going to outwork Michael. He's 38, but he still beats everybody up and down the floor. He can be a teacher on the court. And uh, he, he was correcting me a lot uh, when we were working out. So I see the little stuff. It help, it, it's helping me a lot. He's a hungry enough of a player that he asks a lot of questions that he wants to learn. He wants to be the best basketball player that he can be. But I think he appreciates where he is. I don't think he's taking anything for granted. I think he listens. But he makes a lot of mistakes because he's trying to learn. And, and he will continue to make mistakes, but I think he's sooner or later, he's going to get it. Back here in the third quarter, Kwame. Nice oh, move! Yes. And how about that double pump? He keeps working and, and keep learning about the NBA game. Uh, he'll be a superstar in this league one day. That would be a fitting ending to the story that began back in Brunswick, Georgia. The story told by Kwame in his high school journal. I would not want a different childhood where I received everything I want when I want it. Because I understand that it takes hard work to get ahead in life. I also understand that there is nothing free in this world. For Kwame, it is time for the next chapter in his life, namely his NBA career. And he'll get plenty of advice from his hero, Michael Jordan. But having Jordan around also helps in other ways. The number one pick is usually the center of attention. But Kwame says he hasn't had that kind of pressure, mainly because everyone wants to talk to Michael. 